Well, I'm Cole Caton. I do extemporaneous, informative, and persuasive. And today, I would do my extemp, but that's boring and nobody wants to really hear it. Plus, Devin did a pretty good job, so I, I just couldn't compare to him. So I'm going to do my informative. Machine guns have been around for more than two and a half centuries. Yet, most people don't really know how they started out. And most people don't know how they helped make the world into what it is today. Now, I'm not here to advocate for or against the use of machine guns. I am simply here to state their history. That being said, today we will first see the machine gun's beginnings, then we will see the machine gun during wartime, and finally we will see how the machine gun has modernized after the end of the war. Let's start off by seeing the machine gun's beginnings. Since the first firearm was created in the early 15th century, people were always looking for ways to make them shoot faster. However, it took 300 years for someone to figure out how it could be done. That person, according to Gunn, a visual history, was Britain's James Puckle. In 1718, he created the Puckle Gun. The Puckle Gun was a relatively simple machine gun. However, it did earn the, it did earn the distinction of being the first machine gun. It featured one main barrel with a nine-shot magazine that was fired with flintlock and fired with a hand crank. The Puckle Gun did not see any military service. However, it did lay down the foundation for future machine guns. The next leap forward for the machine gun came a hundred years later from American Dr. Richard Jordan Gatling. In 1861, he created the Gatling Gun. The Gatling Gun was just like Puckle's gun, except for it was improved upon. It featured nine barrels that were turned by a hand crank, and those nine barrels caused it to have the fastest rate of fire at the time. However, the troops on the battlefield wanted a machine gun that was fast and reliable, but they didn't want one that had a hand crank that, in order for it to be fired. The next leap forward for the machine gun came from American-born Hiram Maxim. He began his quest to develop the machine gun in the early 1880s. The gun he demonstrated in 1884, the Maxim machine gun, was recoil operated, meaning that when a round was fired, the gases from that round would be tapped off and would propel the bolt backward and cause another round to be chambered. This caused it to have a rate of fire of up to 600 rounds per minute, and the Maxim machine gun was used in many countries' armies up until the 1950s. Now, we'll see how the machine gun changed during wartime. In the early 1900s, Europe was about to go to war, and European countries wanted machine guns that were fast and reliable, so they looked back to Maxim's design. The Germans adopted Maxim's design in 1908, under the name of the MG-08, and the British adopted it in 1912, under the name of the Vickers. Both these guns served on both sides of World War I, and it showed the world how effective machine guns could be on the battlefield. Another person that would be inspired by Maxim's designs was American John Moses Browning, according to Firearm, a visual guide to small arms of the world. In 1917, as the American doughboys were about to enter the war, they, the American troops wanted a machine gun that was just as reliable as the, Mac, as the MG-08 and the Vickers. So John Browning created the M1917. The Browning M1917 was put into emergency production and served the American forces very well on the battlefields of Europe. However, all the machine guns of the time had one fatal flaw. They all required a bulky water jacket in order to keep the barrels cool and prevent them from melting. But Browning was going to figure out a way to fix that. After the war ended, he went back to designing his machine gun, and in 1919, he created the Browning M 1919. The Browning M 1919 was air-cooled. It had a thicker barrel and a perforated cover, allowing the heat to dissipate better. But Browning wasn't done yet. In 1921, he would create the machine gun that would forever cement him in the history books, the Browning M 2. The Browning M2 is arguably the most successful machine gun of all time. 
it fired the extremely powerful half-inch Browning machine gun round, which could shoot through tanks' armors and disabled vehicles. It is such an effective machine gun that it is still used in the United States military today, more than 90 years after it was first created. Now, we we'll see how the machine gun changed after the end of the war. After the end of World War II, countries around the world looked to develop their own machine guns. One that would be on the minds of most was Mikhail Kalashnikov. In 1947, he would create the most iconic machine gun of the 20th century, the AK-47. The AK-47 was a successful machine gun because it was simple to use, simple to produce, and wouldn't break if you used under too much stress. According to the book Kalashnikov, an inside story of the maker and his weapons, there is an estimated 100 million AK-47s throughout the world today, and they have served on many Asian, African, and communist countries during their wars. Another machine gun that would come along in the 1950s was the FN Mag, known in the United States as the M240. It was adopted by more than 90 countries as their service machine gun, which helped to gain the nickname the right hand of the free world. So today, we first saw the machine gun's beginnings, then we saw how the machine gun changed during wartime, and finally, we saw how the machine gun has modernized after the end of the war. Even though machine guns have been around for more than two and a half centuries, they are still ever changing and ever evolving. Yet we can't forget how they started out and how they helped make the world into what it is today.